is one of the new wonders from Indigo Blue in the United Kingdom. You'll notice it's in two pieces, the wood overlay and the beautiful plastic that we're going to paint. You want to start by taking the plastic cover off of the wonder, and it's probably going to be a lot harder than it looks. Find a spot where you can start peeling it, and there you go. Just take that off. There we are, and our surface is ready. To paint this, we're going to use the translucent acrylic paint available at the Pickers Palace Etsy.com. Indigo Blue has a wonderful range of colors, and today we're going to use red hot chili, ochre, this fabulous purple, which is called Purple Rain, and we may toss in a little red hot chili. Our leaves are going to simply be the Terra Verde. We're also going to use slap it on glass and ceramic. This is going to be the medium that really helps this paint work well on our glass. As you can see, we've got leaves here and at the base, and then the three flowers and the stamen and stems. I'm going to start by mixing a bit of the colors that I love with the slap it on. Let's see, I think I'm going to start with this uh, orange and red. And what I'd like to do is I know that this is kind of the area um, where the stamen is. And this is how it's going to look in the final piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start getting my paint on there and see what it does. It's where I kind of warm up and get an idea of how this paint's going to work and work with my technique. Remember, this is meant to kind of be a stained glass, so we want it to have kind of a translucent look, thus the name translucent with this paint. But as we add more on, it gets darker. Now, the other thing that I'm going for is I want brush strokes. When I saw the owner, Kay, of Indigo Blue demo this, she did some beautiful brush strokes and I loved the effect, so that's my tip to you is don't be afraid to get those brush strokes in. And then I'm gonna start adding some purples down here and blending these colors in. And I can already tell you, I'm gonna wish I had more purple on the ready. The nice thing is too, remember we can come back and we can change this up as it dries if we don't like something, but right now I think I'm actually kind of getting a pansy effect that I really like. I'm not sure what yellow's gonna do in here, but we're gonna add a little and I'm going to bring my yellows down in my gold, down into these flowers. Okay, this is my rainbow, so I can do whatever I want. But really, I love seeing what all these colors do. So I'm going to make these flowers a little bit different than the top flower. It'll be my happy flowers. That one needs to be more flowery. There. And then I think I'm going to use a little bit of red over into this one to tie them all together the way I want. I'm going to switch brushes and see if a softer brush doesn't give me a different style that I might like better too. Oh, look at that. I'm already seeing that I like this brush better 
I like how the strokes and the brush lay out. And then I just muddled in some colors here that I think I'm going to like. Look at that. Much better. And then I want to get more of the golden ochre into the tips and have that kind of pansy effect that I was after. Beautiful, beautiful. This one's dried over here a bit, so I can come in with more color now, add another layer. Look at that. I'm not afraid to get a lot of color in there because it'll just glisten in my window. All right, we're gonna we're gonna let some of that dry a bit and see. Oh no, I'm not. Look at that. Oh, love it. Okay, I'm gonna add more color. Never mind the drying thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna get in here and pop this uh, flower a bit more. Look at that with the better brush. We're gonna get a little more purple going too. Now it's becoming fascinating. I love the strokes in there now with the better brush. So here's my first tip. Use a soft brush. Okay, there we are. Now, let's put away these colors for a second and move on to our green. Now, I love green and yellow. It's gonna give it kind of a interesting blend, so I'm gonna put a blob of the green paints over there where I've still got some of the Slap It On. Blend in the Slap It On with that. And I'm going to pick up the stem. And again, let's see where we're at with that design. Yeah, I'm going to pick up the stem right here. And then down. And I'm going to pick up my flowers. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get some yellow and see if I can't get it to... Give me some shading that I would like. Leaves are never just solid, so I want to get that yellow in there, and it's doing exactly what I would have hoped, which is breaking up the solid and giving me some movement in my leaves. And I'm going to take that all the way down. Again, those, uh, oh, there we go. Well, I'm okay with that actually. Let's get that in there. I like the movement. Get some yellow. Maybe some yellow to the outer edges here and see. Loving it. All right. Let's get this overlay in there and see if we like where we're at with things. Fabulous, huh? It's looking good. All right. I'm going to let that dry for a second and decide what to do with this wood piece. Now, I can do so many things. I can come in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is get a gesso on it. Gesso is going to help us uh, make our other things stick. It's gonna act to bind paint to the wood and give it a good, good foundation. So we're gonna get some gesso on there. We'll let that dry. I'm probably going to opt for a black gesso and then decide what I want to do here. Now, I may come in and I could use um, some of our new WOW embossing powders and get kind of a metallic coating. I, I'm actually really thinking, what if I came in here with the rust kit from Pentart and gave this kind of a thick, rusty awesomeness over those really bright colors? That would certainly fit in my decor. But there's so many options. You could simply paint it with bright colors. You could use any of these colors if you'd like. Add some magic. There is This is just wide open. So, big step here is to paint this 
And then we'll attach our sun, our sun catcher here. It's a wonder sun catcher. And we'll see what we've got. So stand by and we're going to let this beauty dry. Our piece dried overnight. And take a look at this. I came in and I added Pentart glitter paste. I chose the pink over the top of the purple. And when this is in the window, it's going to give it a bit of sparkle and just brightens it up a bit. I am loving where that's at. Now, the last thing I did yesterday was I put black gesso, gesso so good, from Indigo Blue on the entire MDF frame. And then I thought long and hard about what to do next. It wasn't an easy choice because there's so many great options. In the end, I chose using Pentart's Glamour Metallic Reddish Gold. It's actually a beautiful golden peach color. It's got a bit of sparkle to it that I absolutely love. And here's the thing. I want to retain the black in that. So I'm using a straight, stiff brush, and I'm just doing surface painting. I don't want it to go... Uh, thick and heavy. I'm just coming along the top edge of this uh, MDF piece and just giving it a bit of sparkle. And you can see the hint of gold, but that black is actually still really showing through and I like that effect. I'm trying to get off a little excess that I splattered on that top I didn't want. So I just kind of tapped it off and it seems to have worked. So there is, can you see the beautiful gold there? It's kind of hard. There we go. See it? That yellowish gold in the, or I'm sorry, peach gold color. You can see it reflecting on the black. You'll notice that when I painted the MDF board, I actually came in and painted all of the edges, not just the surface. It comes with kind of a brown um, finish to it, probably from the wood being laser cut and burned, but I wanted to give it an all over black, so I really tried to work all sides of it. See, you can tell it's black on the, the base of it and the majority, and then it's got this kind of gold over it. And when it's all set and on there, I think that's gonna look really pretty. So let's let this dry and then we'll assemble our, our wonder in its final step. Okay, for the next wonder, I'm going to decoupage with it. So I've already started to peel back the cover on this. And honestly, I think that's the hardest part of the whole project. It makes me crazy trying to get my nail there. So be patient. It's, uh, it's there for a reason. And what I'm doing just for this project is I'm kind of peeling away the flowers so that I remember where I want the decoupage and I don't overdo it because I get kind of excited with my colors. And it'll give me a guide of where I want decoupage paper. Here's the last flower on the side. There we go. Last flower is off and I want to keep the stems covered and we'll figure out what to do with those next. All right. I've got a little bit of tap water and here is the wood piece that will go over it when we're finished and you can see the different flowers here. There's actually a bit of the stem that I did uncover but I got this and here is also part of the stem. But I think that's okay. What we're going to use 
is I've chosen uh, this beautiful piece of decoupage paper. It's 1922 from ITD, available at the Picker's Palace. And I'm going to isolate a section of it first to go right here. So I'm gonna use a little bit of water and I'm just going to get some water in there and help me pull away a piece that's approximately the size I'm gonna need. We'll set that aside. And of course, now I wanna get this white off. No harsh edges. And we definitely don't wanna risk getting that white in there. So we can set that aside. And here is our slap it on. We'll put some of that, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> we'll put some of the slap it on here so we have it to use. Slap it on is for the glass and ceramic. We'll set that aside. And this is just gonna be decoupaged like anything else. There's no magic here. Using the slap it on, we're gonna get that onto our plastic piece here. And then I'm going to position the paper the way I want it. And I will come back and pull that away later. And then I'm going to add the decoupage medium to the top surface. Just like any other project. That's also going to help me see the lines of the, the plastic. And you can wait until it's dry or you can finesse it off a bit and make sure you get it off this way. There isn't necessarily a wrong way, but there's always an easier way. But I just wanna get that excess off of it now, and then I will trim up my edges with a little bit of a sandpaper later. And I wanna be careful that I don't actually tear away any of the paper that I uh, pull my design. Let's see here. I definitely wanna get in there and get this off of the other piece of glass for now. So we'll pull that to the back because I don't want it to cover any of the glass that I'm not interested in having that on right now, which is the other flower. I'm sorry, I keep saying glass, it's plastic. It is definitely not glass. Okay, got a little bit of the excess off and we'll just let that dry, put a little more medium on it now. I think next time I'll probably cut a little closer. You could also turn this puppy over and um, use it to uh, create a template for your pieces if you wanna be more accurate, that would work really nicely. All right, I'm gonna leave that bit to dry and we'll go on and get, that's how it's gonna look kind of interesting, beautiful. We'll kind of add more and come back and show you where we're at. Okay, I've got my first couple of flowers done and I've decided to change it up. I do that every time. And I'm gonna use some of these creams and golds to go with my reds. It just started to seem kind of like it needed something else. So here we are with uh, ITD paper 1835, and we're gonna see what this splash of color on the other leaves. And you know, I think I'm actually gonna use some of the script here too. Why not? I think it will be fascinating, but really it's all about color at this point. So I'm getting it all, all pulled out of here with a little water, and we're gonna mix things up a bit. I also kept working and decided to feather a lot of these leaves back. And I don't mind it being on the sides, but of course I can always come back and sand it later and get that extra stuff out of there if I'm still not thrilled with the outcome. So we're gonna dry the brush off a bit, get the water off, and we're gonna come in here and see about 
adding some of this gold maybe like that so I'm gonna feather a little more away get just what I want there we go and I think that will just about cover it and be beautiful there we go let's get some of the slap it on on our brush load our brush and add that to this area and then drop the artwork in and of course we don't want to lay it down into the other side that's wet so I'm going to work this away there we go and then get our surface layer of slap it on get rid of those move them to the back for a later decision there we go now you'll notice that right here I've pulled off a corner of that and we can easily patch that out it's easy to do and actually sometimes I think the effect is rather cool all that means is that we're going to take a little piece and patch it in onto the decoupage medium and then whoops there we go we're going to put it right there where that missing paper is and then just smooth it in and in this case I wish I had some tweezers handy but I'm just going to nudge that up there we go there and I think it gives it an interesting effect anyway um, and I don't mind that little bit of imperfection but a lot of times it gives it almost like this like line there that's interesting other times I can seamlessly do it uh, when I patched in pieces on my dresser it gave me almost this cool lightning bolt effect I loved it but it's an unexpected and fabulous um, look when you patch in like that and again if you want to be seamless with it um, you can it can be done very nicely in this case that's actually going to be covered anyway because once that MDF goes back on uh, it's not going to show now I've kind of begun to work the edge here so that I can pull that out as it dries a little more I want to give it a little more medium feels a little dry still let that soak in and around to seam this down all right we're in the home stretch here we've got this leaf and I'm loving those colors together so uh, I think we'll use another piece that's got a lot of the writing still there we go bunches of the slap it on and I'll drop that piece push it right up to the edge so we've got complete coverage always remember that art is perfectly imperfect with our wood frame over it and see where we're at where did we put our wood frame here we go uh, that's what it's gonna look like looking lovely there all right now I've got some really soft colors so this time again I think I'm gonna come in with paint on the stems bring in those yellows and greens like I did last time and then on this frame we'll do something different maybe we'll come in on that frame with um, uh, with uh, some gold. I think gold would look really pretty. Um, we've got Pendart's metallic gold and that's where I'm kind of leaning. But you know, I changed my mind. Changed my mind a lot, in fact. <laughs> dry and then we'll put some primer 
on our M, on our wood, the metite piece, and get it ready to finish. Uh, make sure that when you paint these, consider the uh, insides. It's got a beautiful finish now. You'll notice it's got that natural wood. I may leave it this time and only do the surface of it uh, because we're gonna come back on this with probably the liquid gold from Pentart. And that way you'll get to see a really cool product. And I think the contrast of the gold will be wonderful. So we'll get a white base on this and then hit it with that beautiful gold and let's see what happens.